Because I, I ordered an Uber recently for myself and my 70-year-old mother. And she'd never been in an Uber before. And I can let you lovely people know that if you've ever got a spare afternoon or an evening, just book the maiden Uber voyage with a parent or a grandparent because the whole process will blow their minds apart. Because first and foremost, her youngest son is doing the one thing she always told him not to, which is jump into a stranger's car for free lollies and water. It's like, do you want a Mentos? Hell yeah, do you want some water? I feel woozy. Like it's a strange process to go through. And we get to our destination and bless her cotton socks, she opens up her purse and says, okay, I need to pay, I need to pay, I need to pay the, the driver. I said, Mummy, you, you don't have to pay him. No, it's fine. I said, no, but I want to pay. Oh, I want to pay. I said, you can't pay. And she couldn't fathom what's going on. So I said, how does this work? What is this? Maybe she thought she was going to do something she's not proud of. And she said, oh, no, no, no. And I said, Mum, Mum, it's fine. It's fine. And then, of course, I opened my door and took a step out. But this is when the fun kicks in, ladies and gentlemen. This is when you do what I do which is then turned back in and I looked my mother in the eye and said, run. <laughs> oh, my inheritance is coming closer than I think. That is it's good times. That's what that is. Now, guys, I want to start this set by bragging, but uh, recently I bought myself a laptop. Bought it outright. Thank you. And uh, the only thing is I own it, but at times it owns me. Because it has American spelling, and that shits me. <laughs> it always corrects me. The other day, I just wrote the word meter. M-E-T-R-E. -E, and it corrected me. It said, no, it's meter. <laughs> M-E-T-E-R. I'm like, screw you, America. You don't even use that standard of measurement. <laughs> yeah. That's like a vegetarian just turning up to your barbecue and saying you should turn those steaks. Hey, you should piss off. This is not your jurisdiction. <laughs> Why don't you go back to your tofu and your wind chimes and you leave me out of it, all right? I don't even know what quinoa is. I think it's unicorn spaff and I don't want to taste it, all right? I was actually reading an article the other day uh, with my human eyes. And uh, it said they've invented a car that runs off water. I read that and I thought, shit, why are you making my life harder for me? What's petrol now? Like, was it $1.40 litre? $1.45? Yeah? You ever bought water from a petrol station? <laughs> it's like three bucks for half a litre of Mount Franklin and I'm made of cash. <laughs> but the thing is now, anyone can leave anything on the internet. There's so many avenues. But what kills me is anyone can write anything, but I don't know if it's worth reading. I don't know who that person is. It's like a faceless crime. I don't know if they're an Ivy League scholar or some nutcase who rides public transport and screams about marrying carrots. <laughs> like, personally, I think people should be IQ tested and then allocated a certain font. <laughs> yeah. So if you read a comment in, like, Times New Roman Gold Boss semi-italic, you're just thinking, wow, Stephen Hawkins dropping some truth bombs. <laughs> I should take a sip of coffee and pay attention. If you go a little further and say there's a comment written in Wingdings, <laughs> you're like, I don't even know Kim Kardashian could type. That is <laughs> incredible. Because wow. I realise, even with technology, things will change so quickly. And my daughters will never see money. They'll never see money. Not because not, not their dad's a comedian. Fuck you. Fuck <laughs> all of you for thinking that. I'm just saying they'll never physically see folding cash, you know? It'll just be a concept in a computer that you move across from one place to the next. And I'm torn about it because I think they should have something physical so they can budget and whatnot. But I'm also happy that now our currency won't be in rotation because I think Australia has some of the crappest looking currency in the world. Like being any good middle class white kid, I grew up on rap music, why wouldn't you? <laughs> what, what? Compton, yeah, it's like Geelong, I get it. <laughs> I get it, bro. And so, of course, I know everyone on the American notes. George Washington, Benjamin Franklin's, I know all that. In Australia, all I know is the Queen is on one of our notes, and I know who the fuck the rest of those people are. <laughs> no one does, that's why we named them after food. We're like, do you want a 20? There's a lobster champion. <laughs> do you want a 50? Pineapple. <laughs> 
A hundred? It's been a good week. Avocado. <laughs> and personally, I am happy that $100 bills are called avocados. Why, pray tell? Because I believe each avocado should be at least $100 worth. <laughs> Why, you ask? I'll answer that rhetorical question. Because I believe avocados deserve financial recompense because of what they have to put up with every day of their lives. So I think I speak for most of us here this evening. When I say you're shopping for an avocado, you don't just grab one, you molest the entire box. <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> oh, you feel a bit young, I don't know. <laughs> Oh, not two for five bucks. No, we'll take you, we'll take you. I'll wait, I'll wait. <laughs> Admittedly, that does ostracise some people. Anyone under 20 doesn't laugh at that joke because they can't afford avocados. <laughs> and no man over 60 laughs at that joke because they've never shopped for produce for themselves. So. <laughs> I'm having a barbecue, all right? <laughs> I gotta cook the dead shit, all right? That's. I'm not getting veggies, all right? I'm getting food that's gonna clock up my colon for three months, that's... I'm a man! That's what. Little fun fact though, it is the only produce that you can molest that much and no one looks at you weird. <laughs> Sit there groping away at the avocados, people think you're making guacamole tonight, carry on sir. You can't be sitting there at the bananas, just... <laughs> yeah, they're ready. <laughs> Probably don't have to do that face either, that's a bit much. Because I even think debit slash credit cards have it too easy these days. Everything's just tap and go, isn't it? It barely has to even touch anything. It's weird. My card is supposed to protect my money. Protect it. Yet it frivolously hands it away. My card is like a 16th century French prince. It's just like, do you want a coffee? A bathroom. Do you want dinner? Is it under $100? A beverage as well, eh? <laughs> Don't even have to remember that stupid little pin number. <laughs> I never worked for it, man. Wasn't always like that. Wasn't always like that. I've got an anecdote for you peeps. Any Gen Ys now, look out from your phone. You're gonna learn something. Because I was doing a gig out in the country, okay? Because my career's going all right. Anyone who just downloaded this is in the country is like, well, this is off. I, um, I'm not anything else. I was out there, run out of fuel, and I went to a service station, and I went to pay, and the lovely guy there is like, oh, the internet's down, mate, the internet's down. And I said, I don't have any cash on me, sorry. We're at an impasse, what are we gonna do? And then he pulled out something I had not seen in a very long time. That's right, that is right. A credit card imprint machine. For those uneducated to this, I'll explain it to you. In the 80s, right, there was a metal block. You put your credit and or debit card down. Then you put a yellow piece of paper, pink piece of paper and a green piece of paper. I still don't know why. And you put the credit card down, there's a metal band. It goes on top of it and it comes across and it gets an imprint of all the numbers on your card. That's it. And my card had never seen anything like that before in its life. It was just there like... Uh. I could feel it shaking in my hands like, but Papa... Do I have to? You have to go to the man. I handed it over. It was like a medieval torture rack. My card is down there. <laughs> Why is this happening? <laughs> Get out of here! Get out of here! Take everything. You can have it in five to seven working days. It's terrible. Thank you. 
You know what? You clapped out. It wasn't comedy. You're like, that's pretty good performance art. Huh? Was... <laughs> You're not going to see a better impersonation of a credit card imprint machine, are you? Gosh darn it, did we have some fun, eh? And if you want more fun, why don't you like and subscribe to my YouTube channel? And you can also find me on the socials. I mean, don't DM me. My wife doesn't want that happening. I'm just saying you can follow for all the content and stuff like that. Yeah, saved it.